Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of The Conversation. And today, I got a pretty interesting topic for you guys. And the question is, will the Clippers make Nick Wright look like an absolute fool in these playoffs? So that's what I want to get into. So before we get into the content, make sure you guys go ahead and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get as many subscribers as possible. So please make sure you go ahead and do that. Support the channel. So let's let's just get uh, straight into the topic. So again, Will the Clippers make a fool out of Nick Wright? And that's what I really want to get into um, in today's video. Now, for some of you new followers or people that are not really into watching basketball all that much or may not know who Nick Wright is, Nick Wright is an American TV sports uh, personality, and he also has a sports radio talk show, but he's on the show First Things First, who, um, you know, was moderated by Jenna Wolf, and his running mate used to be Chris Carter, who's no longer there. And now if you watch the show, they usually have these interchangeable pieces that come in either Chris Broussard or some other person to come in and co-host the show with him. But ever since Chris Carter left the left first things first, Nick Wright has basically just run amok. He's just on TV, you know, saying whatever the hell he wants, just going on. You know, he just goes on there and just I mean, half of the time he looks angry when he's making his points and he just likes banging on about you know, how um, the Clippers are not all that good and how the Lakers are going to win the championship definitively. Blase, 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 blah. He doesn't seem to understand what the whole hype is about about Kawhi Leonard. And what's interesting about it is last season when Kawhi Leonard was going through the, the playoff rounds with the Toronto Raptors and he was doing good, he seemed to, you know, give Kawhi Leonard his props and he was saying this is amazing and what he's doing is astonishing with the Toronto Raptors, and it's you know it's really it's a really neat thing to see. But as the playoffs were you know going on, and people started now looking at Kawhi like, yo, could this be the best basketball player in the world? Then all of a sudden, his tune started to change because then he was like, wait a minute, are these guys about to say that Kawhi Leonard is on the same level as LeBron James? That's when he immediately went into attack mode, really. And started going at Kawhi, and he was the minute he, the minute people started saying Kawhi may be the best player in the world, he automatically ran, you know ran to go pick up his pom poms and start cheering for for LeBron James, and started going you know just started you know discrediting Kawhi. Since the season started though, Nick Wright has hasn't been very high on the Clippers. Now, let me just give you guys sort of a, a, a timeline of Nick Wright throughout the season with the Lakers and the Clippers. In the beginning of the season, you guys know that, oh, remember, on opening night, the, 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 the premier game of the season was the Lakers versus, versus the Clippers on October 22nd. This was in 2019. We all remember that. We all know the hype that was leading up to that because of the blockbuster summer that we had with uh, Kawhi Leonard going to sign with the Clippers and also bringing along Paul George with him. Some people thought that he was going to go sign with the Lakers, and that didn't end up happening which I'm sure pissed, pissed Nick Wright off. So during, you know, during the off season, there was this whole build up to the Battle of LA and a lot of people were saying, and rightly so, a lot of people were saying that the Clippers were gonna end up winning that, um, that matchup. And Nick Wright was like, no, you guys don't know what you're talking about, blah, 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 you know, Kawhi Leonard ain't all of that, da, 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 da. So opening night came and what happened? They played each other, and the Clippers won. Now, what was so interesting about that game was that the Clippers won that game 112-102, to but the interesting thing was Paul George was not available for that game. He was nursing. He was still coming off of a a shoulder surgery that he had in the offseason, and that's the reason why he missed training camp with the Clippers in Hawaii, and that has a lot of the reason, that has a lot to do with the lack of continuity that the team has had throughout the season because number one of injuries and the team not practicing uh, a lot together. And I remember at one point, it was said that the Clippers had only had maybe a handful of practices together, which is astonishing if you think about a team that's integrating two stars into their team. So um, that was a bit astonishing. But what happened in game one when they first played? Game one, we all know that Danny Green went off. He hit seven three-pointers to score 28 points. Anthony Davis scored 25 points, got you nine rebounds, a steal, and five assists and two blocks. LeBron James had 18 points, 10 rebounds, and eight assists. On the Clippers' side, Kawhi Leonard had 30 points. Um, He had six rebounds and five assists. Then Lou Williams was sensational that game. He got you 21 points, five rebounds, seven assists. Montrez Howard was a beast. He got you 17 points, 
Um, so he played really well. He got you seven rebounds, four assists. John Michael Green chipped in 12 points. And Maurice Harkless chipped in 10 points. So that's how game one went. And the minute, you know, the Clippers won the game, that game won, and a lot of people were saying LeBron didn't want to see Kawhi, blah, 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 whatever. Nick Wright was the first one to say, oh, you know, it was a fluke and anything can happen. And, you know, even him, even him and Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp was like, oh, you guys got lucky, this and this and this. And wait till Christmas Day. We're going to beat the brakes off. You guys remember all of this. You guys were there. You guys heard it. You heard all the chirping. So there was the big build up to the Christmas Day uh, matchup, which happened on December 25th, which is Christmas. So what happened that game on Christmas? This time, Paul George was going to be available. Okay, and Paul George was available, but the Clippers ended up winning that game because they ended up outscoring the Lakers in the third and the fourth quarter. Because going into the half, the Lakers had the lead, but then the Clippers scored 35 points in the third quarter, and they outsc- and so they outscored the Lakers 35 to 23, and then they also outscored them in the fourth quarter, 25 to 20. So what happened in that game? Okay, Kawhi Leonard led all scores with 35 points, 12 rebounds, and five assists. Paul George chipped in 17 points, five rebounds, and three assists. Zubak was good. He was sensational. He got you 11 points and eight rebounds. And Montrez Harrell got you 18 uh, 18 and six points. And, you know, the Clippers had a balanced attack. On the Lakers side, Anthony Davis chipped in 25 points. LeBron James uh, chipped in 23 points. He got you nine rebounds and 10 assists. So almost a triple-double. But the person that really went off for the Clippers was Kyle Kuzma, who hit four out of nine three-pointers and scored 25 points, I think, coming off the bench for them. And it was a really close game, all right? And it came towards the end of the game where Patrick Beverly was on LeBron James. And LeBron was about to, you know, set up to go for a three-point shot. And Patrick Beverly knocked the ball out of his hands, and the ball ended up going off the fingertips of LeBron James became Clippers ball. They fouled when it hit two free throws and they won the game. And what happened the following day? Just when you thought Nick Wright would come on TV and say, okay, listen, Lakers have lost a home game and a road game to the Clippers, one with Paul George, one without. Surely he was going to say something that would be in the favor of the Clippers, at least say, hey, they were the better team. Instead, I'm, you know, I'm not even going to get into what, I'm not even going to say, I'm just going to let you guys listen. Take a listen to what Nick Wright said after the Clippers uh, won that game on Christmas Day. Take a listen to that. This is the exact scenario why I despise instant replay. We've even done a pantomime on the set of me describing this exact play, which is technically that ball went off LeBron James. For 75 years of professional basketball and 125 years since Naismith invented the damn thing in Canada or in Lawrence, Kansas, depending on who you believe, <laughs> he, that is Lakers basketball. And through the advent of technology, the fact that this becomes Clippers basketball is not getting the call right and is not making the game better. And it, this is always Lakers ball. And what, we, what you will find out, and I've said this before, if you hold a basketball out in front of you and Broussard were to slap down on it, if we were to go frame by frame by frame, it almost assuredly goes off the bottom of my fingertips after it goes off you. Right. But for always, that's been called off the player that made the block, off the player that went for the steal, and changing that does not make the sport better. It is not why the Lakers lost, It is, but this is a pet issue of mine because instant replay continues across sports it in an attempt to make things better makes things far worse in the soundbite nick wright is there talking about that although the ball went off of lebron james hand it somehow still should have been the lakers ball because of the instant replay because they were able to use the replay in that game they actually ended up robbing LeBron and it was it was a wrong call even though we saw in the replay that the ball went off of LeBron James's fingertips at that point that's when I knew that's when I understood that Nick Wright is is a self-deluded person when we're whenever we're talking about the lick the clip the Clippers and the Lakers he's the only one that can watch a game like that look at the outcome and arrive at that conclusion that's when I knew that 
anything from that point forward was just, I literally took it with a grain of salt. I didn't listen to anything that he said. Now, although the Clippers and the Lakers did play each other for the third time and the Lakers won and, you know, LeBron showed up and Anthony Davis showed up. AD chipped in 30 points. LeBron got you 28 and 9. So it's fine. They won. Nope, nope, no problem about that. Although the, the, the Lakers do have, you know, um, the Clippers do have, they've won two out of the last three, the, the three meetings that they played. But for Nick Wright to come out there and start saying all of this stuff, it was just something that completely blew my mind. So to answer the question, will the Clippers end up making Nick Wright um, look like a fool if they, if they beat the Lakers? He better pray that they don't play the Lakers. He better pray that the Lakers get knocked out in the earlier rounds because if the Lakers and the Clippers meet up in the Western Conference Finals and if the Clippers beat the Lakers, let me tell you, somebody needs to come on that show and say something to Nick Wright. I don't care who it is. Someone needs to say, hey, bro, you've been saying X, Y, and Z all of this season. Somebody got to call you on your crap. You just can't be saying all of this stuff and then have the Lake, the Clippers beat the Lakers and you out here still trumpeting. So for me, if the Lakers and the Clippers were going to were to meet in the playoffs, I'm going to pick the Clippers because I already did. I'm not going to switch sides. If they lose, fine, whatever. At least I was consistent. But if they do win and they smash these Lakers, I think Nick Wright is going to look like an absolute fool. And if they and if they do win, I don't want to hear nobody coming in these comment sections talking about uh, you know, this, this, and that, and that, and that, that, and whatever it is. So that's my opinion. So what I want to know from you guys is, do you think the Clippers will end up making Nick Wright look like a damn fool uh, during these playoffs, or do you think otherwise? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content so you don't miss it. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day.